All right, hello and welcome back to Quest for Glory 1, playing as the fighter character. Something I just wanted to show off quickly. Um, this is the front entrance to the Brigands' hideout. Um, I don't know why um, I felt the need to show this off. Basically, somewhere recently, for the first time ever, I saw something that said that if you have kind of full strength and... and um, um, other stats that you actually can be strong enough to just run right through this brigand ambush out front, um, which I did not believe, and that seemed stupid. It seemed like a terrible way for the game to progress. Um, so I just tested it out just to make sure it is not real, and just to show you uh, that it definitely is not real. You have an even worse feeling about this place. Um, I will show off that. Yes, we have essentially perfect stats and everything other than intelligence. Um, and we'll even try to run so that we're moving faster. You try to run through here, nothing happens. You just get shot. You can survive a little bit longer, maybe with uh, full strength, but uh, nothing good comes from it. So with that shown, let me restore quickly. All right, very good. So now that we've shown that that's not the case, uh, let's continue on and complete our journey here. Now, oh, you know what, fine. It's not very difficult anymore. Really wasn't very difficult to begin with, but it's definitely not difficult now. All right, let's continue on here. Come up this way. So we have a couple of things that we need to do. Um, the most important of which is heading into the healer. And giving her the final ingredients for our dispel potion. All right. So I think is the last one. We also need to make sure that we hand over at least one troll's beard and some uh, cheetar claws. Uh, you'll notice that we got a couple of points for each of those things. <laughs> we're so close to being overloaded that every time we get rid of one of the claws, we're no longer overloaded, and then we get paid for it and we're overloaded again. Um, I have so much money that I may well just drop some of it if we're still overloaded. Because it truly doesn't matter. Alright, should be just about done getting rid of these things. Which doesn't really matter at this point, um, because we have so much money that it's not going to affect anything moving forward. We can also turn these in, that's always nice. Um, and I could probably just drop this note, because we don't need this anymore. All right, are we overloaded or not? No, we're good, okay. All right, so the second thing that we have to do is get our rematch with Sorty Lordy here, which is gonna go a little better this time for a couple of reasons. One is because we have optimized our stats. The other is that we're going to drop some excess weight. We need to keep our shield, unless I'm mistaken, because um, I don't think he'll fight us without it. Right, let's see if we can waste a little time by sleeping for an hour. Good. Um, all right. Where are you, you lazy? There we go. Let him come onto screen. Dance around for a little while. And we'll come over here. So. We want to make sure that we don't leave the screen after you're doing this, but we're going to drop our chainmail. We're going to drop all of our potions. Um, that's probably enough. How many rations? Yeah, sure. We'll drop those too. Uh, you can try and drop some cash too. It's probably not necessary though, so I wouldn't bother. Plus, it would take way too long. So let's grab this and we will challenge him again. Pay the weapon master's price and then I salute you. And God, and listen again. So you'll notice that we are not being pushed back nearly as much. And again, that is a, com a combined factor of our increased stats and um, the decreased weight. I don't think that's the way it was intended to work, um, which I could be wrong about. But um, yeah, I don't think that was the way it's uh, supposed to work. However, at least on more modern systems, which would assume that almost everyone is going to be using. Uh, that's just the way it is. So 
this is the workaround to that. You drop all of your stuff there, and right about the time that he gets pushed back to the bench there is when we should claim victory. It's happening a little bit slower than I'd like. Um, I think we're still making steady progress, but uh, I'd like it to be faster. Because um, even with this actually somewhat working now with those uh, corrections, I still don't think that this is what this fight is supposed to look like. I imagine it's supposed to be um, a little bit cleaner of a battle, but um, it just exposes the nature of the operating system and trying to play older games on newer systems. They just don't work quite right all the time. But that's fine. The only thing we really care about is making sure that this guy eats his humble pie. Enough! I can see now that my career must end. Any time that I, the Weapon Master, can be beaten by a mindless, nasty little twerp such as you, it is time to take an interminable vacation. By your leave, I hope your sword rusts and your cape fragments in the most awful manner. He's not very nice. Now, before we go anywhere, let's make sure we pick up our stuff. Um, I believe if you leave the screen, the stuff will be lost permanently. Not 100% certain of that, but I wouldn't test it. Um, all right. Granted, we could survive without any of it, but still, it just seems unnecessary. All right, so we got our victory versus Sorty Lordy. Now, let's get our Dispel Potion. Here's the Potion of Dispel. Wonderful. And there is one extremely important thing that we have to do before we walk onto the next screen. So once we get here in the woods, we need to make sure we pick up some rocks. Specifically, at least one rock. And let's try to move before this guy gets to us, because I don't feel like dealing with him. All right, now we're going to go over here, and we're going to... Oops. We're going to go over here. We're going to eavesdrop on a secret conversation which we're not going to really listen to. Um, basically, these two brigands are talking about how the leader is getting on to them and is getting worried, so um, <clears throat> they're going to need to make an escape, um, saying to always use the back door instead of the front door. They're just going to talk about where the secret entrance is near the bouncer, which is a reference to the Antwerp, which we actually just work, uh, walked past. And the secret word so that Fred goes away is... Haiden Goseki, uh, which I don't know exactly how you would pronounce that, but I believe it should really be pronounced Haiden Goseek, um, which I always thought was a nice little uh, nice little joke. Uh, all right, so this guy will leave. This is Bruno, the guy who's always standing by the front gate flipping his knives. And this guy doesn't matter, specifically because he's now dead. If you don't have a rock or something you can throw with you, um, and you leave the screen to go get something and come back, he sees you and you die. So if basically if you come on the screen without something to use to kill him, uh, it's not going to go well for you. All right, now you don't want to go down straight away because Bruno will be walking there and kill you. So let's waste a little bit of time. We'll come up here, and actually while he's here, we'll do one other thing that we have to do in order to uh, get full points. So we only really have to pay him two gold. Um, I'll pay him ten because why not? We have... More than enough. So we'll chat to him. He doesn't actually tell us anything that we need to know. Um, other than he will tell us uh, a lot of things that really aren't true, frankly. Uh, but he'll tell us how to get into Baba Yaga's hut. So if you don't um, use one of the other ways to find out about getting into Baba's, Baba Yaga's hut, which probably the easiest one is what we did, which is speaking to Bonehead. Um, then this is how you can find out. And then once you leave the screen after paying him, you get two points. All right. Now, sometimes the game kind of glitches, and you know, I'm not going to deal with this. Sometimes the game will kind of glitch, and um, he'll still be down here, but luckily he is not, so we can head up and search this body, find a single key, and move on. Go away. Come down this way, and why don't we just drop these rocks? We don't need them. Although, you know what? Let's keep one of them. 
So there's a couple of ways you can get rid of this answer. One, the easiest thing is just to walk towards it and then it'll bounce out of the way. It'll be kind of mad, but it won't do anything. The other is to attack it, um, which you can throw something at it, but actually I enjoy the little warm up that he does when he starts trying to fight the Antwerp. So let's show that. Cockley, you loosen up to fight. Actually looks a lot like the fight with uh, the Swordmaster there. Confident and loose, you approach the Antwerp. Holy mackerel! Alright, Antwerp then bounces away, and the next time you appear on any screen, the Antwerp will start plunging on you, which is a certain death unless you take out some weapon and manage to defend yourself in time, thus breaking the Antwerp up into a bunch of little baby Antwerps. Alright, let's get closer and see if we can find the keyhole. Despite your mighty efforts, rock doesn't move. Okay. Find a keyhole concealed in the crack in the rock. Let's unlock it. All right. And then we're going to open it. We're going to save the password just so we can get points. We get five points for that. But then we're going to leave and come back and repeat the process because I like to kill the troll that's in here. So this is Fred. Hopefully we have enough stamina to kill him because I haven't rested. Fingers crossed. Should be okay. Should be more worried about health and stamina, probably. Probably the best time to try and get him is as he's stepping in, should be able to catch him. I'm doing a poor job of. Wow. It's about as poorly as I've done in forever. Let's see if we can just do a little more dodging. Help ourselves. Nope. Alright. There we go. Once you catch him, you should be able to keep the train going. Well, that was remarkably difficult. Trolls too heavy to lift. You found some hair. All right. Um, tell you what. Why don't we just do this? And we can even do this. There. All right. Let's carry on. So we have a second battle now. Grumble, grumble, grumble. Uh. So yeah, we have Toro, the Minotaur. is much easier. Although really the troll should have been easier too. I just was doing a very poor job. But, alright. Took out Toro. I'm going to search him. And there is a sign here telling us to ring the bell. Uh, which gets us killed. So we won't do that. Instead, we're just going to smash the door open. Boy, that felt good. There we go. Alright, so let's pop in here. We're going to quickly find these two traps here. A tripwire there and a tripwire there. So now we will safely step over them. And we're going to try and get through quickly before we hurt by too many arrows. And you have to do things in a very specific order in this room. So we're going to close this door, step out of the line of sight of the door, wait for these guys to come. Then wait for them to leave. And now we'll move this chair. Now we will wait. Uh, when they get to like the G or the A, you'll push the candelabra over. Then wait till they get at least to the end of the table, climb up, and swing out. You'll notice these guys kind of look like the Three Stooges. Um, all right, hopefully we get lucky because sometimes the game will crash right here. Excellent, it didn't. All right, so this guy is the uh, warlock of the brigands. And as we find out, as we start talking to him, actually this is Yorick, the jester, um, who went looking for Elsa, and it turns out that Elsa is the brigand leader. Um, he has this little maze here to protect um, Elsa's main room, which is behind here. 
you ask about the mirror that um, Erasmus mentioned and Henry mentioned that uh, re reflects curses back. He says that it's uh, he borrowed it to try to save Elsa, but it didn't work. Uh, but that's enough. So if he stays in here, he'll be very annoying. So we're going to try and attack him so that he leaves. Oh, usually that works. I don't know why it didn't. Whatever. Um, as long as we do this quickly, he shouldn't do anything. At some point, he'll realize we're starting to solve the puzzle and um, he'll try and cast spells at us and like throw books at us, but um, we should be able to do this fast enough that it doesn't matter. Unless... Hmm. Yeah, see, this room, will, this room will be glitchy. All right, hang on one minute. All right, let's see. Let's try this again. Oh, happened again. Hang on again. All right, third time's the charm. I think I just need to make sure I'm not clicking too far, you know, too low in the screen. I should be able to go through just fine. Yeah, I don't know. You feel disoriented. So this is when he should start getting excited. He'll stand up start threatening us. Um, so we pull that chain. We have to quickly get through here and up through this doorway. There's an echo. Sort of knock on this door and then step back through over here. Then this will fall. And then we come in here. Oops. Yeah, now we come in here. And now we come face to face with Elsa. Hopefully I remember to pick up the Dispel Potion. I did, good. All right, so we throw the Dispel Potion on her, otherwise she will kill us immediately. Ta-da! All right, now she remembers who she is. She is Elsa von Spielberg. Uh, she's gonna go home to her dad. Yorick, hey, I'm me again, let's go home. Um, they tell us to take some healing potions and the magic mirror here. The banging is the brigands trying to break into the room. Pick up the mirror and head out the back exit that they told us about. Now, there's one more thing that we need to do before we return to the castle. You actually don't have to do this. You can complete the game, although it's obviously not as good. Um... But yeah, we want to go directly to Baba Yaga's. We did lose one point because I forgot to pick up that initial note from Bruno and uh, whatever the name of the other brigand is that we killed. Um, that's only there before you save the Baron. Uh, Baronet, rather. Um, Hut of Brown. All right, let's step inside. You again? Yes, me. Um, all right, let's grab our magic mirror. And that's it. We'll just wait a second till Baba tries to curse us. Hey, turn me into a frog. No, turn you into a frog. Now we get some great puns coming. The witch is hopping mad. Uh, what have you done? She throws us out and tries to escape in her hut. Well, not try, she succeeds. Now you've really made her sore. All right, and there we are. There's the one point that we lost. Uh, we can look around at some of the people in the room, which we won't bother doing. We'll just uh, wait a moment for Yorick to come tumbling into view to essentially announce the end of the game. There it is. Hey, we have defeated the brigands and become a true hero of Spielberg. Hooray us. All right, so yes, we are now a true hero. Um, this will pretty much end it. I'm not going to read this. I'll read it through the Wizards playthrough. Um, but we will end on the next screen where we have a chance to save our character to be used for Quest for Glory 2, which we will do. Um, after this, I'm going to do the um, 
Thief's version of Quest for Glory 1, um, and then uh, we'll continue our sort of replays by making new versions of Quest for Glory 2 um, with better audio and everything, and then we will take things from there. Um, but until then, see ya!